this all night long? Yes. All right. 90% quit wearing it. And well, let's put like, conservatively 80%. There's, 80%. there's a different, different, different statistic okay. by different reports. I think most people and the ones I've talked to that have it that don't wear it, um, like I said, it's cumbersome. It's hard to sleep. You can't roll over. When it leaks, it wakes you up. Right. It's obviously yes. in those extreme cases, it's obviously better than the alternative, which would be not waking up. But I <laughs> talked to you a little bit about... I don't want to call it a mouth guard or a mouthpiece, but for people that don't have severe cases, for people, and the majority of people don't, we know that it's a small percentage that have that extreme case. We know that most people don't. Most sometimes, with the right diagnosis, you can treat it with a mouthpiece, yes? This is, a, uh, yeah, that's what this is. This is a little mouthpiece that you uh, just put in. Put it at night, and uh, and you wear it, and you go to sleep with it, and then you don't have a conversation with it. You sleep with it. Well, so if I've I had sound a little funny, it's I've because had, I got uh, something in my mouth. But I think it's important that people know that this isn't the only answer, because I have some friends who snore, who sleep. The wife complains about him, and it, it's a joke. We laugh, and you know, and then obviously now I'm probably going to have a little bit more talk. But I talked to him about it, and he said I'm not wearing one of those. And I said, well, but you need Did to at least try? go check. Did he try to no, wear it? No, you can go ahead and take that out if you want. Yeah. <laughs> Did he so even I can try? talk to you. You, No. He has somebody in his family that had one, or maybe his dad, I don't know, but who had one, and who he saw it, and he's like me. I, I told you the same thing. When I saw that, I said I would almost rather, you know, have the alternative. There are a well, lot of people out there. I don't think there. you really want to do that. No, do I don't. But I, what I'm saying is, is that there are people out there that I don't think go and get help or afraid that's, to go. That's, that's good because um, I, I I have it also. You know, I've got a big neck, and I I have it also. And and uh, all I can all I did was I remembered, and I I I really didn't want to face it that I had the problem. Although my we the next door neighbors when we went up to the lake fishing said that I was scaring the fish, and so we never did catch any fish. We had to go across the lake because right. that's where the non snorers so, were. So you got you a you you have a. a but I, what, what scared me was that my father had this kind of stuff all over him. He had a heart attack, and he was in the hospital, and he had all this stuff on him, and, and, and that kept me from having it for about 10 years okay. because I, I, I didn't want to get tested for it. So with that in mind, that sometimes preconceived ideas or preconceived notions Absolutely. dictate what we do, why would I go see a dentist and not a physician? Mike, that's, that's another great question. You're nailing me to the wall here. Um, you know, physicians treat the whole body, and uh, they're trained to treat the whole body. Uh, dentists, me, I work from here up. That's it. So there's signs and symptoms that I can pick up in the mouth looking at and seeing an obstruction or seeing that there's something wrong with the nose, they can't breathe, or the palate is high, and, 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 and these things I can spot. And so if the dentist is trained to spot these things, it's uh, then the next the next step is fairly easy. So you're saying because you're you're in there all the time anyway, that's your area of expertise? Yeah, How? that's all I do is I work in the mouth. And that's where you breathe. I, I read recently, now, up until this time, the sleep test was always done in a hospital to see if you had it. But I read recently that the dentistry, the dentists have been given the ability to, to perform a, a very simple at-home test. Can you tell me a little about that? Well, yeah, um, dentists and physicians can take this test. It's called an ambulatory test or a uh, take-home test where the, 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 the patient can take the instrument home, put it on their hand, and um, they can have a computer readout the next day of, of what went on that night. The, the gold standard is well, what's called a PSG, a polysomnogram, which is done in a hospital or sleep environment. And it requires a multitude of leads on the head and body but um, a lot of people don't want to go to a strange environment and sleep. A lot of people feel funny by people watching them sleep. So well, wouldn't you, wouldn't you, if you were in the hospital, and I mean, this is me, my normal sleep pattern, if I was in the hospital, as much as I would try, I probably wouldn't sleep. 
the well, same way or the same comfort yeah, as I would sleep in my own that's bed. One, that's one of the hang-ups. It's one of several hang-ups. And they've also found that they haven't got all the readings they want because of things like that. So this is done in the environment of their own patient's home. It's very so simple. So you give them, they come in. They see you, you decide, you look, they may have a problem, they snore, they're fatigued, they're tired, they got headaches. I mean, it's amazing, high blood pressure, anxiety, what this causes. But they come and see you, you look at them, and they need the test. You give them the unit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that big, I don't think it goes on their arm, right? Right. They go home, they have a normal night's rest, a normal night's sleep, like they would normally do in their home. They bring the unit back in, and you can get the readings off that as to what's going on during the night? That's it. And then from there, from there we, d we see what the patient has, and then it's diagnosed to see we work with physicians on this to make sure that everything now is how right. Long is this, how long has this test been available? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'd probably say about five years. Because I don't, everybody I've ever talked to, because I like to talk to people, I like to really find yeah, out. I, I, I really don't know how long. I found out about about four years ago. It, uh, but it's it up until recently it probably I don't know if it's been used a lot or they just didn't do it but most everybody I've spoken to that had sleep apnea that they wanted to test had gone to the hospital right well that is the gold standard and that's what the industry demands and uh, earlier this year the American Academy of Sleep Medicine uh, gave the nod to let's go ahead and try this and see uh, I guess because there's there's really three kinds of people. There's people that have a mild case, there's people that have moderate, and then there's severe. Okay, so uh, if the patient has a mild to moderate, and that's what's diagnosed, uh, then we can go to an oral appliance or an oral appliance. Now there's there's like 86, if you imagine, 86 FDA approved mouth appliances for sleep. But I want to make sure because I. I, I talk to people and they don't know, most people don't know that you know, a high percentage of the cases can be treated with just a, that little oral appliance you showed me. And I think people aren't getting checked and that's my concern as they get checked. We are totally out of time. I want to ask you right now, I know you have a lot of information on your website, I know that you have a lot of literature you send out, but if somebody's at home, thinks they may have a problem, you know, snores, wakes up, fatigues, tired like I do every morning. They have questions, they have concerns, they want to know where to go to find somebody in their area to help them. I, I met your staff, they're very nice. Can they call you or can they visit Absolutely. you online and will you help them? They can call me, they can call my, uh, take a look at the website, they can look at the American Academy of Sleep Dentistry, uh, which and is... And that is American Academy of Sleep Dentistry is who... Is a part of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. and. Um, to find out about oral appliances, to find out about who does them, uh, who's lined up with them, who's associated, who's a member, uh, just like they would check out their own physician for this type of thing, I would suggest that. The, the challenge is, is in the medical profession uh, and with physicians, in a four-hour, four-year, four four-hour, four-year um, educational span of their education, they're doing the whole body. Right. They spend two hours in four years, and that's what the National Foundation of um, the Institute of Health Research and found they spend two hours on sleep. Right. So it's understandable that, that that's why there's a profession of the pulmonologists and ENT right. that have come out to, to specialize in this stuff. Right, so Doc. that's we what are, you got. We are completely out of time. I'm going to have to have you come back on this. This is a, a huge issue that, that affects 40, 50, 60 million people in this country alone. I want to thank you for coming in and spend some time with me and sharing the information. If you've been watching Medical News Network, I'm Mike Wigenstein. Until next time, I wish you good health.